All right, I want to welcome those joining us today uh, into our service uh, by television, by radio, and by live streaming. If you're listening by radio, you can go to www.theshepherdshouse.net, get the entire program. Our radio programs are about 30 minutes in length, and the live streaming and the uh, television is closer to an hour. I want to make an announcement real quickly before uh, we get into the Word. Uh, I'll be uh, holding revival uh, this coming week, uh, July the 9th through the 13th at the East Willow Street Church of God in Scottsville, Kentucky. And it starts on Sunday night going through Thursday night uh, at 7 o'clock. Brother Danny Patrick's a pastor, and I'm looking forward, and uh, it's always an honor uh, to be asked to come hold revival uh, anywhere. And uh, I'm honored that I've been asked, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. So come on out and be with us to East Willow Street Church of God, Scottsville, Kentucky, July the 9th through the 13th, 7 o'clock, and pray that the Lord would use me. I'm looking forward to having a great time. Those folks down there will make you feel welcome and make you feel at home, and uh, you'll feel the love of God and the presence of the Lord as soon as you walk through the doors there in that church. So come on out and be with us um, through the 9th through the 13th of July. All right, in the Word of God, let's look into the book of Jonah, uh, chapter number 2. Jonah, chapter number 2. We know the story of Jonah, and uh, I'm not going to read all four chapters. I'm just going to read uh, chapter 2 and chapter 3 uh, today, and they're short chapters. All right, chapter uh, number 2, uh, verse number 1 says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the sea, and the floods can pass me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters can pass me about, even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever, yet hast thou brought me brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple, that they observe lying vanities, forsake their own mercy. I will sacrifice unto thee with a voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed, salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry ground. Jonah 3 verse 1 says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with the sackcloth, and set in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast herd nor flock, taste anything, let them feed not, nor drink water, 
But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that's in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you and praising you for this day, thanking you and praising you, Lord, for this opportunity, <coughs> Lord, to come and to preach your word. Lord, we pray, Father, that once again, Lord, that you would touch me and anoint me. Without the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I know that all that I say and all that is done by me, Lord, would be void and it would be in vain. But Father, through your power, through your anointing, I know, God, that you're able to touch my body. You're able to touch my heart, my soul. And Father, Lord, that you are able to give me the words that they will come forward. Help me, Lord, to preach without fear. Help me, Lord, to preach, Lord, whether it's accepted or not accepted. Help me, God, to do your work and, Father, I pray, God, to help me, Lord, to press forward, Lord, doing, Father, Lord, for the kingdom of God and laboring, Father. Lord, I pray, God, to always keep me humble, keep me tenderhearted. And, Father, always help me, Lord, to be found in the center of your will, doing the things that's pleasing unto God, not pleasing to myself, not pleasing to the congregation, but pleasing to you. Father, I praise you and I thank you, for you are worthy to be praised in the mighty name of Jesus. We humbly pray and ask all these things this day. In Jesus' loving name we pray, amen. The title of the message today is A Change of Direction Brings Peace. A Change of Direction Brings Peace. Now, whether you realize it or not, or whether I will admit to it or not, I'm headed in a certain direction, and so are you. Now, sometimes we think that we're going to Nashville and we're actually going to Red Bowling Springs because we get on the wrong road. Sometimes we might think that we're going to Louisville, but we wind up in Shepherdsville because we get on the wrong road. There's many roads out there today. Amen. The Bible tells us that we uh, need to get on the straight way, the straight path, because straight is a gate and wide and, and, and narrow is a way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that finds it. But broad is a gate and wide is a way that leads to destruction, and many there be that enters in thereat. So we need to be on that straight and narrow path. Amen. To be on the straight and the narrow path, we're doing things. God's way and every time that we decide that we're not going to hardly do it exactly God's way but I've got these reasons why I'm doing so many things my way I'm just going to take a detour because after all sooner or later I'll eventually get back on that right road but see what we don't realize is what we run into uh, taking those shortcuts hey amen most of the time the shortcut winds up taking me twice as long to get there Amen. Sometimes a shortcut, amen, is the expensive way. And if you're not careful, you could get into some nails, amen, and get a flat tar going uh, that shortcut. Uh, that's one thing about a GPS. They're good sometimes to get you where you want to go if you don't know where you want to go. But sometimes uh, I think they were uh, designed by a liberal Democrat. Amen, because they'll put you on a path sometimes, amen, that you don't want to be on. Me and Jeannie got started uh, somewhere, I, I think, while we was coming back from Atlanta. We uh, stopped at Cookful, and uh, I ate a bite, and uh, we got back in the car, and I said, I'll just get on the interstate and go back up uh, about a mile and get back on uh, 111 and come on back in through Livingston, Tennessee, and on up and uh, through Moss and uh, Tennessee and on up through Tompkinsville and back home. And I said, I'll go ahead and plug this thing up. 
anyhow, we decided to take me further down I-40 uh, in the opposite direction. And I said, well, let's just see where this thing's going to take us. And it took us on down, uh, you know, another five or six miles to another uh, exit to uh, get off the interstate. And we went up and down every cow path can be thought of. I told Jenny, in a few minutes, we're going to be through somebody's cornfield. Uh, i never seen anything like it. Uh, I go two miles and go here. And I told her, I said, I ain't never doing this no more. I said, next time, I'll just go my way. And when I get back to 111 where I'm supposed to be, I can plug the thing back up. I'm not going to take a chance on this. It finally got me back through Gamal and through Lamb and back to Glasgow. But I want to tell you one thing. Uh, there was part of the time uh, I said, you know, if we have a flat tar, how am I going to tell somebody where we're at? Uh, I'm going to say, I don't know. We're in Tennessee somewhere, I think. But I don't really know where. Because the last time I looked, we was in Cookville, and we made five turns, uh, three to the left and two to the right. I don't know where we're at, uh, and this GPS won't tell me. I said, I don't know where we're at right now. I said, I don't ever want to be to the place uh, where I don't know where I'm at. You get on that straight path, uh, and you stay there, and you'll always know where you're at. Uh, you're on that way to heaven. Uh, amen. And when you get to the end, you're going to be home. Amen. Praise God for that. Uh, I'm thankful for that. So here was Jonah. Jonah was called to preach the mighty word of God and he had a message that he wanted to go down. Amen. I was told to go down and tell Nineveh. Yet in 40 days Amen. And none of us shall be destroyed. Oh, it was a fearful message. Amen. Sounds like something that I've had to preach. Amen. A few times. It was a fearful message. One that was not going to be accepted. Amen. Very well. Amen. Not going to be liked very well. Amen. So he decided instead of doing it in God's way, I'm just going to go down to Joppa and take me a ship going to Tarshish, which is in the opposite direction. Amen. So he did. Oh, he got in all kinds of trouble. Amen. He got out there and a storm came. Amen. Jonah was in the ship. Amen. In the sides of the ship. Man, they were taking on water. It was getting in really, really, really bad shape. Their lives were in danger. Amen. So the shipmaster said to everybody, call on your God and ask for God to give us mercy here. Amen. So he finally, he got to missing Jonah. So he went down into the ship and he found Jonah down there. Amen. He remembered that Jonah told him, amen, that they were running, he was running for what God had told him to do. Oh, he said, you need to call upon the Lord. What are we going to do? And Jonah said, if you'll take me and throw me overboard, he said, everything's going to be all right because I'm the problem. Amen. They knew that he was the problem, so they threw him overboard. But see, God, amen, through his uh, mercy and through his grace made a way, amen, for him to escape. I'm thankful that God doesn't obliviate us, amen, the first time we rebel against him. And I know you're saying, well, Brother Jimmy, I, I don't rebel against God. Yep, I've got some swamp land I like to sell you in Arizona too, if you believe that. Amen. Every one of us has rebelled against God. It at one time or another, either a little bit of rebellion or a whole lot of rebellion. We either rebelled for a day or two or we rebelled for a year or two. But everybody's rebelled a little bit. We decided, well, I got it real close to how the Bible says. Mike might miss a few things. Amen. Then you excuse yourself. Amen. But God didn't excuse you. Amen. See, Jonah, he excused himself. He said, well, I'm just going to go to Tarshish. I don't want to go down to Joppa. Amen. And see, sometimes it's easier to run, amen, than it is to admit that I've got a need. Amen. It's easier sometimes to, amen, hold on to the church pew till our knuckles turns white, amen, and then wait, amen, and pray. instead of going and repenting, Lord, let him shut up. Uh, soon. I can't take much more of this. I'm going to make a beeline for the door. Amen. They're going to think it's where uh, one of those jet airplanes has went through the sky and left that trail of smoke. Uh, but that's going to be my car uh, going out of the parking lot. Uh, amen. As soon as I can. Uh, amen. To get out of here. Uh, amen. I can't take this much more uh, until next Sunday. Amen. And uh, knowing him, he's liable to hit this again. Uh, amen. Next Sunday. Uh, I'm, uh, some of these days, uh, I'm going to do better. Uh, and the devil says, that's right, brother. That's right, sister. Some of these days you're going to stop your rebellion uh, when things get easier. Amen. When you don't have to go to the barn and milk the cows, uh, just goes and puts it in a tank for you. 
things get easier. When you can get up and don't have to take a bath anymore, you can be like George Jetson. I always admired George Jetson. I'd watch him on, uh, uh, you know, TV, the cartoon er uh, actor there. Uh, you know, uh, George Jetson. Uh, he was so many years in advance. Oh, he'd be laying in the bed, uh, and this robot would come and get him by the uh, pajama uh, collar and jerk him up out of the bed. Uh, he'd been carrying him across the house. Uh, he'd been put him in the shower. Amen. And take him out of the shower, and him still asleep. Uh, you know, and uh, take him, put his clothes on him, uh, and put him in the car. Put his suitcase in his hand. Uh, amen. And get him started off to work. Uh, amen. To where everything was automated for him. Uh, when everything becomes automated, uh, to where I don't have to sacrifice, uh, I'll get up out of the bed and get to Sunday school. Amen. But right now it's just easier, uh, amen, to store another 30 minutes, uh, amen, than it is, uh, amen, to come into the house of God. Uh, amen. Oh, listen, uh, we're always looking, uh, amen, for an easier path. Uh, amen. Instead of standing, uh, amen, and telling them people that are complaining, uh, amen, uh, about the preacher's preaching, uh, amen, to offer them condolences, uh, amen, through repentance. It's easier to say, well, now the preacher has got some faults, and I don't agree with them on a whole lot of stuff. You know, what you're doing is giving them an excuse, amen, to continue on what they're doing. You're agreeing with them partially, amen. When you, what we ought to do, amen, is stand flat-footed, look them in the face, and say, if you wouldn't backslid, it wouldn't bother you. that I'm a man of God, I'm a woman of God, I'm full of the Holy Ghost, and I'm backing up the man of God, not a whimpering backslider. Amen, that's griping and complaining, but it's easier, amen, to take the easy road. It's easier to run, amen, than it is to stand, amen. But Jonah got in trouble. Oh, man, did he get in trouble. So here was a fish, amen. God didn't obliviate him. Thank God for that, amen. He made a way, but God wasn't done with him. See, there's one thing about running from the Lord, and there's one thing about fighting the Holy Ghost. You're gonna soon find out that your arm's too short to fight against God. Amen. The punches is going to come in one direction. <laughs> He's got a long arm and you got a short one. Amen. Sooner or later, you're going to give out. You're going to give up. Amen. So the sooner you give in, the better that life will go for you. Amen. The sooner that you'll get peace. Amen. The preacher's preaching won't bother you anymore. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the woman. You know, I heard this story about this woman. Uh, she said, uh, uh, she amen, the preacher on everything. Man, the preacher preach on adultery. And he, she'd say, amen, preacher. Preach it, brother. Oh, the preacher would preach on stealing. Uh, she'd say, amen, preacher. Uh, preach it, brother. Uh, oh, the preacher get to preaching on lying. Uh, oh, she'd say, amen, preacher. Uh, get in there and preach it, brother. Preach. Uh, oh, man. She'd back him up. Amen. The preacher got up. Amen. And got to preaching against that old nasty snuff. And she was a snuff dipper. Amen. Had a little snuff running out of the corner of her mouth. And she looked at the preacher and said, You done quit preaching and gone to meddling now. <laughs> Amen, it's a little bit different. Amen, listen, but you know there's peace. Amen, when we repent. Amen, when we change directions. Amen, there's joy. Amen, comes in our lives. Oh, but listen, amen, the Lord, amen, wants us, amen, to have joy. Amen, and God knows that his way is a glorious way. God knows that his way is a peaceful way. God knows that his way is a good way, and he's wanting us to go the good way and make things a whole lot easier. The marriage is easier when we line up with the word of God. Amen. The bank account, amen, becomes easier when we pay our tithes. Amen. And people don't understand that. Amen. Till you start having faith and paying your 10% like you ought to to the local church that you go to. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Things get better for you. Amen. Your finances, and it don't make any sense, but I'm living proof of it. Amen. Where the Lord, amen, helped me through a lot of different things. And to learn, I could live a lot better on 90% than I could on 100. Amen. And it don't make any sense. Amen. When you use logic, amen, but the kingdom of God's not built it. Amen. On logic. Amen. It's built it on faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. We walk by believing. Amen. Listen, if your paycheck comes in and you lost your job, you pay your tithes anyhow. 
knowing that God's going to give you another job. Amen. He's going to work things out, but it's easier, amen, to hold that back. Well, as soon as God gives me another job and my money frees up to where things is easier on me, I'll go back to paying my tithes. Yeah, that's nothing like a logic of a lost person. I mean, a, a, a weak, excuse me, <clears throat> carnal person. Amen. But when faith, amen, it's easier to run and go in the opposite direction. Amen. Jonah found out, amen, it wasn't a good place to be. So here they got him. I know Jonah was dreading it. Well, it's my fault. I brought all this on me. Can I tell you something right now? I don't know how many people. See, I've been preaching over 41 years now. You don't know how many people. I've sat, amen, and talked to them, and tears run down the side of their face. And they said, Brother Jimmy, I should have got my kids in church and kept them in church, but I, I, I just got out of church. Now the girl's pregnant, out of wedlock. Now the boys is on drugs. Another one's got locked up for stealing. and I'm, I'm in a bad shape. But if I'd have kept them in church, they might not have been in the shape that they are today. But see, folks, you can't go back, amen, and relive your life. Amen, today, amen, is the opportunity to get on the right road and to go in the right direction, amen, to make a change in our lives. Amen, to find the peace of God, amen, that we need to have. Amen, we rebel against God's, amen, uh, setting up of the home. Amen, listen, we're in trouble. That's all there is to it. When the men refuse to take, uh, amen, charge over the home and the women refuses, amen, to take charge over the house, amen, the house is a woman's part, amen. Running to the house, I turned it over to my wife. She done a good job too. Man, did she do a good job. I'm just now realizing how good a job she done. Whew. Ironing her shirt's the hardest thing I ever done in my life. You'd think it'd be simple. Amen. The hardest thing I ever tried to do. I tried to put them in a dryer. It gets the most of them out, but they still need a lick or two with the iron. Amen. I even watched a video the other day, and I said, I'm going to have to move that computer over there in front of the ironing board if I ever get this figured out. Amen. Running of the house. Amen. I learned. Amen. Laundry is not as easy as it looks. I messed up laundry years ago. Jenny got her a job. Amen. Was helping me with some things. Amen. Years and years ago, she's working second shift. So I decided to do the laundry. Mm -hmm. I did. I helped her out. I done the laundry. Amen. All the boys said, Daddy, why is my underwear pink? <laughs> I said, because I put the whites in with some red shirts. Amen, and I, I threw them all in there together and washed it with warm water. Jenny said, wash everything in warm water, so that's what I did. Boy, that was a bad thing. Amen, because they faded out. Amen, the boys didn't like their pink underwear, and I didn't care for mine either. Amen, it made me feel funny. Amen, it made me feel strange. Amen, so you learned. Amen, the running of the home is a woman's job. Amen, when she runs it like she's supposed to be, running it, and the man treats her good, helps her out, amen, but let her be in charge, amen. So I backed up and I said, you teach me whatever I need to know about this laundry, and I listened to her too. The running of the home was her business, amen. I helped her out, but I let her run the home, amen. We line up things, amen, like it's supposed to. Things is going to work okay, but running gets us in trouble. So here they got Jonah, and they throwed him over the boat. No doubt he was dreading, I'll be dead in about three to five minutes with no oxygen. I'm about to drown. But see, God made a whale to come, a big fish, another place in the Scripture, in the New Testament says a whale. Amen. So he brought this whale. And in the mouth of that whale, there's a place of oxygen, air. Amen. That's contained in there. And the Lord allowed him to go into the belly of that whale. And he sustained his life. He sustained, his life was sustained. There's people today that are walking around. They're not living. They're just existing. They hadn't embalmed them yet. They hadn't buried them yet. Amen. But they're walking zombies. Amen. They're dead. There's no joy. There's no peace because they're not following the will of God. Everything's out of shape because, amen, they're refusing to line the home up, amen, like it needs to be lined up. They're refusing to line their life up and putting God first, amen, in everything. They keep taking these detours. They keep taking these shortcuts. They keep wiggling, amen, on that straight and narrow path, amen, off and around a tree. 
kind of like Mr. Magoo. I'm heading down the road, and I think I'll go over and look at that pig pen for a minute. Amen. One of my family members years ago, I got behind them. I ain't going to say who. <laughs> One of my family members years ago, I got behind them, and I was following them on the road. And I thought, I wish to goodness you keep your eyes on the road. You're making me nervous. They was going down the road, and they'd be looking over there, and they'd jerk it back over the lane where it belongs. Then they get to looking over here at the corn, and all at once they jerk it, amen, over the side. They, uh, they got so far over at one place, amen, their uh, rear view, not rear view mirror, but their side mirror, on their pickup truck, hit one of the stop signs on the side of the road, broke the mirror out. I told him, I said, you know what? If you get that thing in the road and keep it there, you wouldn't do that. Nothing like a smart addict preacher. Amen. But that'll preach. Amen. Because they kept looking at everything. They had to see everything uh, that everybody else was uh, doing uh, up and down the road uh, and think on it for a minute. Uh, amen. Instead of watching the highway. Y'all ever seen anybody like that? drive out in front of you because they ain't got their mind on what they're doing. Amen. There's a lot of people, amen, that's missing out and they're getting themselves in trouble trying to go the wrong direction and a weaving all over the road. Amen. Everywhere. Oh, listen, there's a straight, narrow path to be on. You better not be wiggling around and doing things your way. You're going to get in trouble. That's all there is to it. So Jonah was out in the ocean and all at once this fish came, swallowed him up. I can see him as he slowed Slides down the throat of that fish, down into the belly. Now, you might think, well, he was safe and nice and warm. Yeah, he was nice and warm, all right. It was hot in there. I can tell you that right now. Also, it stunk. Have you ever smelled the inside of a fish's gut? Oh, man, everything in there was rotting and decaying around with old seawater. Oh, nasty. Old fishy smell. Amen. Seaweed wrapped around his head. Amen. No doubt that old green slime. Amen. All over him. He felt sticky and hot. I'm surviving, but I'm not alive. If I had not a ran from God, I didn't want to go down there and preach to Nineveh. I didn't want to go down there and possibly uh, uh, take some conflict, amen, from the people. There's one thing about it. If you're going to preach the gospel, you've got to turn your back on the audience, amen, and watch the orchestra. You've got to leave the orchestra, turn your back on the crowd, amen. That's what you're going to have to do, amen. If you're going to pastor, amen, you've got to preach to those, amen, that's following Christ and the belly acres and the backsliders and the hypocrites is going to get mad and they're going to leave amen but those that love the Lord you know what they're going to do they're going to say I love it I love it give me more of it pour it on if I can't take it I'll be the first one to the altar they'll say move over Phyllis my sins is bigger than yours watch out Fred I've been meaner than you've been I got to get up there amen we'll turn out amen like 12 uh, 13 pigs on a 12 spigot sow Amen. Amen. We'll be uh, trying to push our way, uh, amen, into the uh, to mama, amen, to get what we need. Uh, amen. Did you ever watch them little pigs? I raise hogs. Uh, amen. They'll run, jump up on top of their brothers and sisters and wiggle their way down to get to the spigot. Uh, amen. Because they want it so bad. Uh, amen. You'll be wanting to go to the altar. Lord, I need it worse uh, than Fred or Phyllis either one. I'm going to get up here because it's me, Lord, that stands in need of prayer. It's not my neighbor. It's not my brother, but it's not my sister. But, oh, God, have mercy on my soul. I ran from you. I went in the opposite direction. I'm miserable, and I need to be set free. And I'm the biggest sinner that there is in the church, Lord. Let me get to that altar. Let me be the first one, and not only the first one, but, Lord, let me have the works to back it up that I actually got something when I got up here. Ooh, I'll make about half the country mad now. I've seen people run to the altar. Oh, they get them a handkerchief or, or they get them one of these uh, uh, Kleenexes or tissues, whatever you want to call them, uh, out of the box up there and they'll dry their eyes and oh man, they'll say, boy, I took a whooping today. I went to the altar and I prayed and I boo-hooed. Yeah, and you went home with the same mindset. I'm going to do the same blessed thing again this week. I'm not going to pour my whiskey out. I'm just going to keep on a sipping. I'm not going to get rid of my beer. I'm just going to think about it this afternoon. I'm not going to stop my line. I just felt bad for what I've done. I said, God, forgive me. 
I'm not going to straighten out my horror mongering. I'm going to go right back and get in the bed with him or her tonight, but I'm just going to try to get rid of some of this sorrow. I'm going to try to get rid of some of this guilt, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to sob. Amen. Listen, what happened to Jonah? Amen. He went down in the belly of the whale. He said, from the belly of hell, that means the belly of the grave, I cried I unto the Lord, and he heard me. And you know what God done? Amen. The Lord caused that fish, amen, to vomit or to speed him up, amen, on dry ground. Amen. Some say as well, oh, Jonah made the fish sick. He vomited him up. That's not so. Let's get back to what the word says. Amen. God caused the fish to vomit him up. God was in charge. Amen. The whole time he was rebellious, God was still in charge of his life, giving him opportunity. Amen. During the time of his misery, during the time of his rebellion. Amen. During the time, amen, that they were that he was mouthing and complaining about the situation until he repented. And he spit him up on ground on dry ground. Then the Bible says that God came to him the second time. Amen. This time he said, Now go down to Nineveh, just like he did the first time. And he said, Cry out to Nineveh and tell them yet in 40 days, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. And you know what happened? There was a three-day journey from the word that the fish had vomited out on dry ground into Nineveh. And while he was about a day's journey, out away from the ocean, headed toward Nineveh. Here comes some of the people. And Jonah told them what the, his business was and why he was there, amen, and what he was going to tell the king. So they ran ahead and told the king of Nineveh what Jonah had went through, what Jonah had suffered, amen, and how Jonah's now on his way, amen, to give you a message. Then in 40 days from now, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. And you know what? Amen. That king made a decree across the land. Let every person, every animal sit in sackcloth and ashes. Not eat or not drink. And hopefully God will repent of what he said he was going to do. And the Bible says that God saw their works. Well, Brother Jimmy, we're not saved by works, we're saved by faith. That's exactly right. But when we repent, there's some works to follow. Amen? Listen, James, a half-brother of Jesus, amen, said, you showed me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Amen? Because I've got faith, because I repented. Now you watch how I'm going in the opposite direction. You watch the turnaround. I'll be at Sunday school next Sunday morning. I'll be right here tonight, too, where I belong. Hey, man, I'll show you my works. God saw their works, and he repented of what he said he was going to do. That means that God changed his mind when he saw their works. Hey, man, so lip service is nice. Hey, man, sometimes we'll tell the Lord, oh, Lord, my next paycheck, I'll give you the 10% right off the top. Sure will. Yes, sir. Yep. Amen. And the next paycheck comes in, you'll have something come up, a bill that you, oh, I forgot about that doggone cable bill. Uh, I'll have to wait till the next Sunday. <laughs> Amen. And the next Sunday, oh, I was going to do it last Sunday. And I, oh, God, I forgot about the water bill. It was $36. Whew. I can't, I just, it's going to make it too hard on me. Oh, the devil always make excuses. The devil always, amen, give you, amen, a reason to run. Amen, but see, when we turn around, when there's a change in the road, amen, there's works, amen, to back up the tears. There's works, amen, to back up, amen, the things that we say. Sometimes people will say, oh, if you need me, give me a call. Yeah, and they got their phone turned off. Can't never get them. Amen. And sometimes it's like family. The only time they see you is when they need something. Amen. I saw this thing on one of those programs. Amos, no, see, what was the name of that? It was where the real McCoys, that's what it was, the real McCoys. And Amos McCoy, uh, he was visiting over with a man, played checkers with him all the time, you know. Well, he had a sister that came in or sister-in-law that came in from somewhere and he's eating him out of house and home. 
and she just eat and eat and eat. And she kept saying, well, I guess I need to go home. And he said, yes, sir. I'll be glad to help you get your suitcase right now. You know, and, and she'd find some reason to stay another day. And she'd just eat and eat and eat. And, and she said, well, you know, I don't want to take advantage of you. And he said, that's right. Yes, I understand. That's fine. And if you need to go, I'll take you to the bus stop. She said, well, I can't go today, and she just eat and eat and eat and eat. You know, me and my dad watched that together, and we both laughed. The tears was coming up in our eyes one night. Amen. I said, that reminds me of some other people, skin folks that I know. Amen. You're always glad, amen, to see them, but you're gladder to see them go. Amen. They can eat more than a sow and six pigs that eat. Amen. Listen. But, but you know, what I'm saying is they wear out their welcome. Amen. Well, we need the works. Amen. To back up. Amen. Words is easy. And we'll put off things. Oh, I'm going to get that fixed. Oh, yes, I am. Some of these days, that dripping in that faucet, it wakes me up at night. And it's been doing that for six months. And one of these days, I'm going to jump in there. I'm going to fly in there like grease lightning and fix that Yes, I am. I sure am. Yeah. Sounds like Pa Kettle sitting on the front porch with crowbar. Amen. Uh, the front porch post falls out and the porch falls down and says, crowbar, we're going to fix that here one of these days. We sure are. We're going to get her done. Mm -hmm. We're going to just jump in there, and we're going to get her done. Uh, amen. There's all kinds of people uh, has problems around the home. Oh, Lord, help me. I'm getting in here into your business now. Amen. The wife of the man says, I wish that woman would quit nagging on me. Would we'll get up and do something about those, those things that needs to be fixed, and she might quit nagging. <laughs> amen. Oh, Brother Jimmy, I'm going to get to it one of these days. I'm just saying, we ain't had time. I well, gone to fish was a biting yesterday, and I, I, I thought I'd wait till someday when I ain't biting. I'll get to it some of these days. Amen. And that gets, see, it causes problems in the home. Amen. When the wife gets bringing it up, but you don't understand. Every time I turn the faucet on, it sprays me in the face with cold water. Oh, but it's not in my face. <laughs> and if you was a good wife, you wouldn't be nagging. If you was a good husband, you'd get up off your britches, uh, amen, and go fix the thing. Uh, amen, listen, we need to get her a thing. Oh, mm, help me, Jesus. Uh, amen, it's easy to put things off. Uh, amen, and then see, when you've got, when, when you've got, uh, when you make the wife happy, happy life, happy wife, that's right. The whole home runs good. You know, the kids isn't a good meal because mama's in there whistling while she's fixing salmon and biscuit. <whistles> hey, man, uh, she's a singing. Uh, when the rose called up yonder, I'll be there. And the tears run off the side of her face and drips into the dishwater because she's got peace at home. Uh, and the husband's helping her, amen, through everything. Uh, and the kids is happy because they're eating good. Uh, and their clothes smells good. Uh, and they feel fresh. Uh, when they get out and they get on the school bus, amen, when they get out into the public because mama has got her clothes fixed, amen, you'd be surprised how everything runs good when everybody's happy, amen, so we need to do what we can, amen, to help people, amen, because it's easy to put things off, amen, push it over to another day, push it over to another time, amen, sometimes people think, well, the wife didn't nag and throw a fit today, She's kind of getting used to that water now. <laughs> and I can keep putting it off. It's because she don't nag every day, she might finally get to the place, I'll either have to fix it myself or I'll just have to shut up because he ain't going to do anything. But on the inside, I'm hurt. On the inside, he don't love me enough. Well, Brother Jimmy, that don't mean I don't love her, no, but that's what the devil's telling her. Amen, that you don't love her. If you loved her, you'd take care of that. That's one thing I can say about my wife. If she ever brought up anything, I got her done. And I didn't let no grass grow under my feet. Amen, I attacked it. I went right straight to Lowe's. Amen, and got the things. Amen, to get her fixed. Amen, it's just as easy. Amen, to go ahead and get it took care of than it is to try to make excuses on why that we didn't do it. Amen, and put up. Amen, with the stress. Amen, sometimes. Amen, when nobody's saying anything, you might think that they're kind of getting over it. They've adjusted no, you better be careful. You'll wind up like that country music star. He just kept on mouthing and coming in drunk, and finally she caught him asleep one night and sewed him up in a blanket and took a broom and whooped the hide off of him. 
Amen, that's a true story. Amen, so you better be careful. That wife may get back at you. Amen, if you don't get to home in order, amen, like it needs to. Keep the stress down. Amen, listen, the, we, we turn, amen, in the road. Amen, and go in the right direction. Amen, it brings peace in the home. You got peace in the home, there'll be peace in your heart. Amen, there's nothing any worse than trying to live in 2023 with all the mess you see on television with all the mess you see going on in the public, people dying right and left, people coming up with cancer in every direction, just one thing right after another. All the news that you hear anymore is something bad. You got that mess in the outhouse, I mean the White House, on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, and the mess that's backing it up, and the lying in the media, and, and the, all of the pervertedness, amen, that's across the nation today. Amen, listen to school systems. Amen, trying to tell the kids, if you want to be a boy, we'll fix it in a way where your parents can't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. Man, they got things, amen, in a mess today. Everything turned around, amen, and, and perverted. Oh, what a mess our country's in. What a mess is in the land today. It's hard enough, amen, to go when everything is running good. You know what? When the home is in order like it's supposed to be, when the, uh, the man of God, amen, that's over the home and the woman of God, or over the family rather, and the woman of God that's over the home, amen, is doing like they're supposed to be, it's just like a fine-tuned clock, amen, that's been properly oiled and everything balanced. It's just... And they got those old eight-day clocks, Amen. My dad had one of them. I've got it now. One of them eight-day clocks. You wind it up once a week. He'd go every Sunday afternoon after church. When he got done eating lunch, and that was his routine to go in there first thing after dinner or lunch on Sunday, and he'd wind up that clock, wind up the striking part on one side and wind up the running part on the other side. Amen. And it didn't sound exactly right to him. He'd stop that thing, get some three and one all that he kept in the cabinet in there, and he'd click, 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 click. He'd try her again, and he'd listen to it. That sounds good. He'd close that little door and pull that little latch down over top of it, and he wouldn't fool with it no more for a week. But won't that preach? Wouldn't it be good if you didn't have to fool with your situation, amen, for eight days? Just get wound up real good, amen, in church, amen, get to hold up real good through the Spirit, amen, around the altar when you bring your needs, amen, and bring your problems, and don't just confess it, but bring it and give it to the Lord, amen, and go back home, set your house in order, move in a right direction now, amen, head in the right direction uh, and start believing, uh, amen, that God uh, wants me to be happy, that God wants me to have joy, that God wants me to have peace in the home, and God doesn't want me to have turmoil, amen, and uh, some type of stress, uh, amen, and some type of uh, something going on. There was a man one day said, well, I got to go home this evening. I said, well, you look forward to it, I guess. No, he said, I opened the door and throw my hat in first. <laughs> I said, why you do that? He said, I want to make sure when I open that door and throw that hat in, she shoots at it instead of me. Oh, me. Listen, folks, you ain't got much of a marriage if you got to throw your hat in. Amen, before you walk in the house. See, if you'd straighten up, get in the right direction like you ought to, amen, she'd run. When she heard that truck pull up in the yard, or that car pull up in the yard, she'd drop her dishes, amen, in the sink, dry them hands off, amen, undo that apron, run out in the yard, and meet her baby halfway to the house, put a big lip lock on him. Hey man, so honey, I'm so glad to see you. I miss you. See, if you treat them like you ought to, amen, they'll love you for it. One thing I loved about my wife, Every time I walk in the house, her face would light up just like she saw, you know, a movie star walk in. See, when you're happy, amen, there's joy in the home. And she would hug me and say, oh, I missed you. And I'd kiss her on the cheek and i said, honey, I missed you too. See, listen, when there's joy in the home and you're treating one another and respecting one another, 
like it should be. Amen. That's the kind of home that you have. And I don't preach anything to you that I didn't live myself. Amen. Amen. When I preach on you needing to be attending church more, amen, you can mark it. I'm here every time the doors is open, and I'll be in other churches around through the community, amen, helping them. Let me say this to some of you. I'm going to quit here in a minute or two or five. You know, we need to support one another. All the churches around, they really like it when they see our bus come in. Where comes Brother Jimmy and that bus load from up there at Shepherd's house? But you don't ever see it turn around and come the other direction. Yeah, they too busy. They too busy to visit me, but y'all come on now. Y'all come on and visit with us. We'd love to have you burn your gas. Take your time. Visit with us, but I ain't got time myself. I sure like to sometime. I keep planning on it. Amen. Boy, the truth, truth. I even heard the electric pop a little bit right then. That was so strong, a lot of loosening some of the nails. Amen, in the ceiling. Oh, but listen, when we turn, amen, and get in the right direction, there's peace that comes. There's joy that comes. You know what? It'd be good when you have a revival in Glasgow, Kentucky, if that church is having a revival, it'd be so full of other people that are like-minded. I'm not talking about, uh, you don't have to have the Church of Christ go visit a Pentecostal church, which that would be good. Amen. But at least you ought to be able to get the Baptist to go visit the Baptist. And the Pentecostal ought to go visit the Pentecostals. Amen. And the Methodist ought to go to the Methodist. Instead of having an attitude, it's my four and no more. Y'all come on. We'd love to have you come visit. All right, we'll come this week to your revival, and next week you come to ours. Oh, well, I, I, well, I'd love to. I don't know for sure how it'll be. But maybe I can. And knowing all the time, I ain't a fixed and go. Two weeks? In the same month? Well, there ain't no way. I'd have laundry piled up so high uh, you wouldn't be able to get in the door. Amen. Put it in the, amen, in the washing machine, a little load wash while you're eating supper, and throw one in the dryer to dry while you're going to church. They'll make a way made. Amen. Instead of sitting down when you get home, amen, and watching television, and take them out of the dryer and fold them up and put them away. Amen. You're smart. You'll find a way to get her done if you want to get it done. Amen. Bad enough. If somebody calls you and says the only way for you to get $5,000 that belonged to your uncle that he left you, you've got to come to Louisville every night next week. And they would be there alive or dead. They'd tell their family, if I was to die, you take my corpse up there. Our family needs that money. I want a representative to go. Hey Amen. We get that kind of, man, what a message. We get that kind of desire to go to the house of God. Hey Amen. The pastors wouldn't lose their hair and the rest of it turn gray. Hey Amen. Because, hey Amen. Because you're not getting what you need. Hey Amen. Well, Brother Jimmy, I think I'm in fine shape. If you sit down and ask the pastor, hey Amen, how he feels about you. Oh, Lord, help us. Amen. We all used to dread. I'm going to quit here in a minute. We all used to dread the employee evaluation day. Uh, the place where we worked said, now tomorrow is the employee evaluation day. And I'll be taking each and every one of you, setting you down in the office, and giving you an evaluation that I have to turn in to top management. So they would sit down, everybody be dreading it. Whew. And you come out, everybody be discussing it. They either say, I don't want to talk about it, and you knew he got the bad one. Or they say, Well, you got me on this. I'm always two minutes late every day. And he got me on being the first one to the time clock. And he got me on my mouth. Always running my mouth. And now he evaluated me. I was a good worker, but I couldn't keep my mouth shut. I thought, boy, he could pastor a church. <laughs> Woo, help me, Lord. But see, we change direction. It'll bring peace. I love you. God loves you. I hope you love me. Let's stand together. Goodbye to those watching the TV and the radio.